Hello everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining our webinar today, Balancing DevOps and Idle. My name is Alex Mazurik with Clint and I'll be your host during this session. At this point, I just want to cover some grounds for the audience. Uh, first off, everybody is on mute, but if you have any questions whatsoever during any point of the presentation, uh, please be aware of the Q&A box that should be on the right side of your screen on the GoToWebinar page, and uh, feel free to ask a question, and we will have a designated portion at the end in which I will uh, read all the questions aloud, and uh, our presenter today, Joel, will answer them for all to hear. Also, please use the Q&A box if you have any uh, technical problems whatsoever. We will do everything we can on our end to make sure uh, we alleviate any uh, problems you may be experiencing. Um, the webinar today is going to be approximately 25 minutes for the presentation, and we're going to allow about five minutes for Q&A. Um, if we, we don't happen to get to your question, um, we will, um, Joel will be looking at all the questions, and uh, we'll make sure that he has a good answer that we can send back to you um, at some time after the webinar. And uh, last off, the webinar is going to be recorded and will, will be ma made available for everybody later. Uh, we'll be setting a, um, a link to the recording. Now I'd like to introduce our organization, Quint Wellington Redwood. We are a completely 100% independent management consulting firm that was established in 1992 over in Amsterdam. So we've been in business for over 20 years now. We've expanded to uh, over 250 global consultants. Uh, we operate today in over 49 countries on just about every continent. Um, our core business practices include sourcing, architecture, governance, lean IT, service management, and DevOps. Um, and for the last couple of years now, we've been listed as one of the top global advisors on sourcing and governance by the IAOP, and we can continue to be a trendsetter in the areas of service management, lean IT, and DevOps. Now these are our three main areas of business. Um, first off is consulting, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, we come in and we help organizations organizations resolve IT related organizational challenges um, and then we have the Academy wing of our business which is one of the largest training organizations in the world actually we can help your uh, people in your organization get trained for everything from ITIL to COBIT um, to a whole mess of uh, product, product management methodologies and last, uh, last off is our solutions wing in which we actually license out the same uh, training materials that we use in our Academy uh, to other providers in order to train students and now, with any further ado, I'm going to hand over everything to our uh, presenter today, Joel Pomalis. Thank you, Alex. Good morning and good afternoon to everyone. I'm Joel Pomalis, and I will be uh, talking with you today about DevOps and ITO, how to balance it, and how we can uh, pick the best of both worlds, so to speak, to, uh, to deliver better value to our customers. Um, so what are we talking about here? Let's talk a little bit about both frameworks and set the stage. I am aware that some attendees may have an idea of what both are, but this may be a good refresher. Uh, DevOps is the practice of operations and development engineers participating together in the entire service lifecycle from design to development. It has been defined as a culture movement or practice that emphasizes communication and collaboration between developers and other IT support pro professionals to establish a culture where build, test, and release of software can happen frequently, rapidly, and reliability. And of course, our old friend ITIL it's a service management framework that focuses on aligning IT services with the needs of the business. It describes processes, procedures, tasks, and checklists that can be used by any organization to establish integration with the business strategy to deliver value and implement improvements. I realize that DevOps, as of recent years, has been the darling of the industry. So what really happened to ITIL? Why does it get a bad rep? Well, a couple of things that we can talk about here. So general perception that IT is a lot of work. And it is, in fact, a lot of work if you take it literally, like dogma. Many organizations have done too much work on documenting processes and procedures, and they have become fatigued. Now, documenting processes and procedures is not bad. It's doing too much of it that is bad. And, to, and doing it literally, like ITIL says, instead of adjusting what ITIL says to something that works for your company, your culture, and your environment. Right? And of course, when you specialize uh, in the old standards, the old flagpoles of what I call the old flagpoles of ITIL, incident problem, change, and config, and not much else, there's very little value. I mean, ITIL is an integrated life cycle framework. And it's stuff that happens in design and transition and operations that specifically deliver value when working together. And if you just take a small part of ITIL, instead of looking at it from a holistic perspective, you're missing out in some benefits that ITIL can provide, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. 
vendors have a little bit of blame here too. Many of them, we shall remain nameless for obvious reasons, uh, have tried to shim it ITIL in a box. And you see that out of, a bo out of the box, major ITSM implementation are almost always literally textbook ITIL. And ITIL cannot be expected to work out of the box. There's a whole lot of work that you need to do to make sure that you're doing the right things the right way. Many organizations do not know or do not go out to gather and document requirements from their customers in the first place. What is it that they want in a service? Uh, what are they expecting from us? Um, it's just not documented processing tools. These are things that will drive the culture, the behavior of the IT support organization through the design of good services and everything that is required to deliver those services, processes, procedures, tools, to, uh, to, to have this and to understand how it supports the customer. You know, if you don't know what your customer is asking for, how do you expect to serve them correctly with when you design something or support something in terms of operations? How do you know the voice of the customer and how the activities that you do in support of the value stream in effect provide value to them? How do you know that? However, I do think that there are also some risks in doing DevOps for some organizations, not all of them, but for some. Couple of things here. Uh, first, on for me is spending time doing the wrong thing or spending time that are not valuable, right? Chasing after unplanned work, after waste, after changes, and after IT uh, type of work, instead of also looking at the business and how we provide value to the business. If all you're doing is internal work and very little business-related work or, or work that directly affects or effect a business value, you may not be doing a whole lot of good work, right? DevOps has a very big cultural change aspect. If your people are not ready to change, it's not going to be uh, effective. DevOps is also heavy on the, uh, the code and the application aspect of an IT infrastructure. And it can be used for hardware to a degree, especially in virtualized environments. But for some organizations, some organizations that have been doing work in in a, in a legacy way or in, 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 in ways that where DevOps is not a good fit, that may be not a good case for you to go out there and tell them, hey, we need to start doing DevOps because it's a great idea and we'll have things faster. You probably make things worse. Poor situational awareness in terms of improvements. Uh, if you don't have a good visibility of the upstream and downstream impacts of what you're putting into production, DevOps is not going to be much of service. You're just going to fail faster, right? And you're just going to make operations fail faster because they will they will not support things in a good way if they don't if they don't know what's happening, if they don't know what are they getting because you don't know on the design, on the dev on the development side of the house exactly how your services are laid out. Failure to account for risk. Um, doing things in a DevOps way doesn't give you an excuse to not consider risk. Um, if, you, if, if you're not doing this activity right now without doing DevOps, of course you need to, but without doing DevOps, doing DevOps is not going to be any better. It's actually going to be worse in terms of risk. You're going to add risk on top of risk um, for, for an immature organization, and that's not very good. And if you're not measuring for improvement right now, uh, DevOps, again, DevOps is not going to be much help. You need to have data, good data, good actionable data for improvement. And the way that you improve DevOps is by having and capturing relevant data that enables you to make better decisions. So DevOps and ITIL do need each other. Uh, and I like this illustration because some people think that ITIL is a way of the past, is a dinosaur. It so happens it is a very powerful dinosaur still. ITIL provides a structured way of thinking about services, about, about the life cycle of a service, of a, of a service in, a, in, a, in, a very, in, a, in a very good and structured way. It gives you perspectives and ideas on service design, alignment of business and IT, it talks about business relationship, how to have these conversations with customers, how to go out there and gauge what is it exactly do they want in terms of my services? 
how do we how do I determine the demand of my services? And it provides it can provide you with better reliability and quality of services. And of course, our friend DevOps, you know, slim, fast, quick. It provides collaborative working, continuous and fast deployment rates, faster feature delivery, and focus on important work and environment stability. It, uh, it allows people to be better at transitioning stuff from development to operations in a quicker, streamlined way. Right? So they need each other more than they should dislike each other. And let's talk about that. But before we do that, let's talk about waste. I tell, when taken literally, Straight, straight out of the book, and if you were to lay the book end to end with all the all of its databases and plans and things, it can generate a lot of waste. Now, some of the things that ITIL offers, uh, in terms of planning and databases, are very valuable. But you can go very, very deep into generating waste by doing stuff that's in the book that. It's not really a fit for your culture or your organization, right? So you need to be a little bit careful there. This contributes to people getting what I call ITIL fatigue. Oh, we've done this before. We have documented this process, and we started doing it great for the first six or 12 months, but now no one looks at the process. No one is following the process. And when you talk about ITIL, you get the, um, you know, people roll their eyes, and they sigh, and they go, well, we have some processes over there. Or we have something in SharePoint. No one's really revised that in in two, three years, and you know, people and people won't follow it because they they got tired of being boxed into a specific way of doing things. You didn't actually build the processes in such a way that it enabled people to do them without generating a whole lot of waste and unwanted work. Right? DevOps was faster feature delivery. Right, but it is waste and not idle that can slow it down. Idle does not. If idle can give you stuff that enable DevOps to be better, okay, but it is waste and not idle that can slow you down. Meaning that if you if you literally build your process and your tooling, ITS your ITSM process and tooling structure. Just like ITIL says, and then you try to do DevOps, you're not going to be very successful. One thing is not going to be married well with the other. So, considering the diminishing of the, the diminishing of waste before you try you try to do DevOps, may be a good thing to make sure that DevOps works quicker and faster, just like it says it does. You can have a thorough. You need to have a thorough understanding of all the processes and how they work in the value stream before you do DevOps. You can't do it without them. And I, and I say this because um, if one of the processes in the value stream is not working correctly and it's not providing good input from, from one place to the other or it's not processing inputs correctly from one process to the other, you may, you may have an issue in DevOps. And that's where the uh, kinks in the system come. Okay? That waste that you create in ITSM processes and structure translate into tools. I'm pretty sure that many of you out there have seen a tool in a specific, in a, in, and specifically, for example, a change management module in a tool with multiple forms, with multiple fields to fill out, that it takes 10 to 15 to 20 minutes to, to just enter a normal change request, and you know what happens next. People won't follow the process, people will put poor information into the form, or people will will just stop doing it because it's too much work. Why? Because you went into your process and you made it so bureaucratic and and so and with so many steps that then you took those things, you put them into a requirements document for your tool vendor to do, and you told them, hey, build this, and they went ahead and they built it just the way you said. But it's it's a big cumbersome process that doesn't really provide any value, right? So you need to consider this before trying to do some so and so and this is applicable as well if you're not, even if you're not going to DevOps, this is good advice. You might want to you might want to revise and continuously revise the way that the process executes to make sure that you get waste out of the system. So what are you what do you may be missing for IT from ITIL? Robust service coping. 
you know, you can have a good DevOps activity if you don't know exactly the scopes of your service or exactly the scope for which your DevOps activities will be applicable. ITIL is good for, it's good for this. It'll, it'll give you the design rigor and the strategy perspective for you to say, okay, these are the services that we're going to use for, for DevOps. These other services, we may want to not do DevOps there because it doesn't make sense, or we want more stability and we want more reliability. It's not that DevOps doesn't guarantee you those things, but we need to make sure that in, for those services, you may want to be a little bit slower, more legacy, quote unquote. But more making that distinction and having that data, the only way you can do this is having a good design, is having great information in your portfolio, having a great perspective from the customers in terms of demand and their user patterns and so forth. Having having good design activities is great for from my from an ITIL perspective. You see, many organizations out there don't sweat the details enough. They they have stuff in operations and they're operating it continuously and they're trying to improve it, but they don't have that design that continuously design element, meaning that every time I see something in the infrastructure or something happens, and for, or for example, an incident or a problem, if if I if I can't correlate that to a design aspect that didn't happen during design, then I have a problem. ITIL provides you the mechanism of understanding what happened in the infrastructure in terms of an incident or a problem or a failed change, and through CSI, go back to the service design phase, look at the design, and say, well, this didn't happen, this didn't work the first time around, let's go fix it in design and push it towards operations again and see what happens. Of course, ITIL gives you outlooks and strategies. The man management is very well, so one of the very important processes that you can follow, and you don't even have to follow the entire thing. Understand the man, uh, from the man management, if you understand patterns of business activity and user profiles, that right there in terms of strategy, that gives you a very powerful perspective. Of course, the other processes are important as well, but I'm singling out on those two because those give you some sort of idea exactly what is it the customer wants and how we can serve them. Of course, a good transition activity. Service transition is just not configuration management and change management. There are other elements as well, not just knowledge management. It's the transition planning and support pieces, the glue that helps transition be good from development to operations. And if you want DevOps to succeed, you need to have that part working like a clock and making sure that whatever you transition, it's not only code, it's code, it's training, checklists, knowledge, push down to operations so you know, in such a way that it becomes easy and faster for them to consume it and to support whatever it is you're transitioning. And of course, CSI. You know, ITIL gives you that facility, that, that model, those models, the PDCA, seven steps, to continuously ask yourself, how can we be better every time? <coughs> so how can ITIL help DevOps? Well, you know, a couple of things that we've also discussed. Uh, services in service strategy, demand management, portfolio management. You want to have a perspective of your customers and your service models and pipeline. How are, you, how are we serving customers and why do they care? In service design, our design coordination activities and making sure that everything that we do in design is working together to deliver value. Uh, your service design package and your service acceptance criteria, big, big things here. You want to make sure that you understand the services exactly as you design it. Every aspect from technology to, to code, everything that goes into your service design package. Mm -hmm. And of course, service acceptance criteria, you want to make sure that the organization is ready to accept. How do you do this? Well, you design, you do that in design and then you transition forward. Transition planning and support, it's again the glue that keeps things between dev and ops together. Uh, having a great CMDB is, is key. And then you can ask me, well, Joel, uh, you know, doing a CMDB is hard work. Uh, we've tried it, and we failed. And and I could counter in that, well, yes, but maybe what you tried to do back then is to have a, C a configuration management activity that went out there and gathered all of the CIs in your network, all of the CIs in your, in your organization, and you didn't have any structure to manage them because you went out and and try to do it in a big scope. And maybe what you can do 
in coordination with strategy and design is determining the scope of your service in such a degree that makes managing a CMDB simpler. You know, maybe there's stuff in your organization that that you are okay with saying, well, it's we're man, we'll, we're going to manage it like a it, like a sort of black box, and we are going to rely on that thing. Maybe we can con document and and put in place, for example, OLAs between those groups, and have uh, and have that black box group, quote unquote, administer those CIs, but the main CIs into in for the services that we offer from a vital business functions perspective are this number of CIs and we're going to manage those and this is our CMDB and everything else has links into and out of and we are going to account for it and make sure that we understand what information goes into those little black boxes but we're, we're not going to to spend a whole lot of time in those our vital business functions are, are this and our vital business function CIs are those right and of course knowledge management provides that information to all of the lifecycle processes so you want to make sure that you have a good function there having great change, change management, but but a, in a non-bureaucratic way, meaning you want to have a good change management process that accounts for risk, that provides authorizations, but you don't want it to be a burden to your people. Uh, go out there and, and, and ask them, how can I make this process better? Maybe you want to start streamlining your changes, making more standard changes, and understanding that some things are not that risky. And if you have good people and, and they respond, Respect the process, and they understand that if they respect the process, they can do work faster in change by by being good at maintaining the risk low for certain changes. Maybe you can achieve that. In terms of operations, of course, incident, problem, and request models that come from the design phase into it tested in transition and put in place to operations. Very important. You want to involve operations early in the process, and you want to ha and you want them to have input into your models. You want to bring them earlier into the uh, development phase for them to contribute data, perspectives, ideas, and knowledge. They're the ones that are in front of the customer, so they're the be they're the good the better people to tell you that a model is going to work. Or not. And of course, our friends in CSI. Measuring your service, making sure that you have data to improve all the time, and you do so you and you do PDCA. There are other improvement initiatives you can do. We'll talk about that in a minute. DevOps provides a culture shift to what ITIL has been traditionally perceived as, right? So it provides system thinking. It amplifies feedback loops. Again, bringing people people earlier it, into the development pro, into the development phase, embedding people into and people and knowledge from operations into development. So as we talked about earlier, you may want to engage operations people early and you want to have them there. And provides a culture of continuous experimentation and learning. Uh, four main areas that within DevOps that can work well with ITSM, mainly extend development to IT operations. Um, and we spoke about this. Uh, second wise, create IT operations feedback into development. And it goes, again, it, it, it's a, it's a two-way street. You have you have the dev people talking to ops and maybe embedded in ops and 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 the other way around. You want them to have those feedback loops there so information gets shared. And one of the things that ITIL can do for you here, again, through knowledge management, through the through the configuration management database, is providing the same information to all of the people and making sure that they can consume it. So one of the things that we can do to facilitate uh, the the adoption the uh, the uh, usage of ITIL in support of a DevOps initiative is to use Lean IT. Lean IT is the extension of Lean Manufacturing and Lean Services principles to the development and management of information technology products and services. How can this help? In multiple ways. For example, Lean IT considers Kaizen events, small improvement events that can deliver improvements over time. Meaning it's an approach to solving problems and the basis of continuing incremental improvement. Lean IT works in five main dimensions. Performance, process, organizations, and behavior and attitude. This last one is one of my favorites and one of the most important ones. It gives you certain tools to enable the organization to actually start a meaningful cultural change. Uh, respect for the individual. 
uh, the fact that you need to go out there and actually sit down where the work is occurring and, and, and looking at what they're doing, how they're doing, and understanding that, respecting that, and bringing them in earlier. So if you want operations to come into dev or to contribute and help, you may want to first go there and talk to them and see how they work, not only by talking to them, but actually going out there and sitting in the service desk and going with the technical people and going out there in, into operations and, and just telling them, show me how you work and understanding that and understanding how the way that the work can contribute to that and having an open mind, having that respect for the individual and move forward with that. Uh, it provides a view into customer dimensions, the voice of the, of the customer and enables you to, to, con to construct a value stream off of this. And this is very important. You know, I tell it's a life cycle framework, okay? But the value stream enables you to determine the flow of a, of certain of, of, a, of an activity and how the processes within that value stream enable that flow. And understanding that flow will help you identify waste, identify opportunities for improvement, and it will give you a view of how the organization works. And of course, the, the identification of waste on wanted work, overburdening, uh, and, and, invari and variability in the, in the process. You're able to see this in, in a very scientific and clinical way. In, so you can go out there and, and work towards eliminating or reducing the amount of waste a process or activity occurs. So where to start? Start with what you have. Gather data, gather relevant data. You don't need to go out of there and, and grab a, a, a big tool or a big product to do this. Just start with what you have. What you have maybe not up to par, but start there. Maybe you have something. Maybe you can make sense of it. If not, then ask for help. Uh, talk to your customers. Get them in. Uh, go and understand how is it that they use your service to deliver value. How, what is it that they consider value? You need to make sure that you have their perspective. Check your portfolio. If you don't have one, go out there and look for something that looks like one. And, and make sure that you understand what's, what is in it. If you don't have an understanding, go back to your customers and maybe from talking to them, you get to see and understand exactly the services that you provide. Understand your service scope. Again, you don't want to take on more than you can handle. Understand exactly what is it that you're delivering. Go read your, science, your service design package. If you don't have one, you might want to start considering about having one. Uh, if you do have one, make sure that it has been updated and it has relevant information. Make sure that you have a transition planning and support strategy. And no, it cannot be, I hope the services will handle it. The service has, gets, they're already overburdened and they, have, they are already managing a whole lot of activities. Uh, you want to make sure that they are able to handle anything that you that you get that you give them, and if you want to do DevOps, you better have a, a good transition planning and support strategy, and that inc that involves doing many of the things in service transition in a good way. Involve them early in the process. Make all functions participate in strategy design and transition, especially in services. They're your window. They're your foot soldiers, and no one better than them knows what is happening out there. Identify waste and get rid of it. Do small improvements. Take the elephant and start taking it small bites. You don't have to go out there and improve every process at the same time. You're probably not going to be very effective. Identify a problem, go after it clinically, and come up with an improvement. Put in operations, measure it, and see what's, what the result is on the other side, and then do it again. And then do it for another thing. Learn from what you did there and apply that elsewhere. And encourage a culture of, improve, of improvement, not blame. This is about learning and pointing fingers and blaming people because they didn't do something or they did something and it broke. That is not conductive to, a good, to the health of a good IT organization. Change that around. Instead of blaming and instead of encouraging a, a, a culture of blame and shame, encourage a culture of improvement. Recognize that things happen, yes, and people make mistakes, yes, but turn that into a positive spin. Let's, let's, do, let's tell people, like, look, I know that happened. Let's do a Kaizen event. Let's analyze the events that transpired there, and let's make sure that this doesn't happen again. 
and we'll involve all people in a very positive way, in a very respectful way, to make sure that we understand what happened, and we understand the, the, the conditions in which it happens, and we understand how we can avoid it in the, in the future. Right? And, and when you do find a solution, reward that person. Even if it's the same person that failed, and he or she recognizes that he or she failed, go out there, shake his hand, say, "Good job." You know, I I, I recognize that you you improved on your mistake. We and not only you, we all learn from that. And I and I and I really thank you for it. And I'm pretty sure your organization is going to be a better place. Right. With that, I am going to turn it now for questions and answers. All right, thank you, Joel, for the excellent presentation. Um, we had a few questions that were asked during the during the presentation, so I'll go ahead and jump right into it, the first one here. All right, so it says here, uh, we have tried to implement IDLE um, a few times now and haven't been very successful. Um, I've seen that DevOps is, is maybe a little bit more attractive. Why should we still do IDLE? Well, IDLE will provide you a, ba a base for, from where you can start doing better DevOps. Right? You don't really implement ITIL. Think of it as a document that says of common best practices that you can use and leverage for your organization. You know, DevOps, is, in my opinion, is not going to work well if you don't have the, the uh, foundations for doing, say, developing a service or designing a service or transitioning a service well. You don't have to do all of ITIL, which is something that, that some organizations Often, often try to do and fail. Just look at what your organization can handle in terms of culture, cost, and time. Look at ITIL, look at what you can leverage, and then start doing those things that will guarantee some, some level of success when you're undertaking DevOps. Okay, got it. Um, mm -hmm. We'll go to this next question here. It says, uh, there's a few um, articles out there on DevOps, and it seems to be a little bit more about the code than infrastructure. ITIL looks like it handles both. Um, should I use DevOps for apps and ITIL for infrastructure? Well, there's no reason to ignore it and DevOps because it came from the software development side of the house. You can do both. Uh, infrastructure is as equally important as code. And of course, now when we have we're talking about virtual, you know, virtualized environments and cloud, yeah, some of these things can be abstracted. Uh, all, all you need to do again, is to have a good foundation of how to do services, how you plan for services, how you dis how the, you document those services and know what's in scope of them. It, it really doesn't matter. You know, it's a, for the customer, for the end customer, you're giving them a service. You're not giving them code or, or servers. So take, keep that in mind when you're, when you're thinking about this. All right. Um, the next question, Joel, for you is... Uh, we document processes in our organization, but people don't seem to follow them. Um, how can I expect them to follow DevOps if they can't even follow a simple incident or change management process? A couple of things here. Um, attitudes, the attitude and behavior of behaviors, I'm sorry, of the people that are doing this need to be modified to, to respect of, for the individual and understanding of their work. You know, go out there and see how they work. Um, what what in Lean IT is called do a Gemba walk. You go down to the floor, ask them questions, see how they work, um, and and li go live a li live in a life in the day, live a life in a day of a service desk agent or an applications guy. Um, just look at them, respect their work, and observe particularly about waste. Waste if when you have waste generated by a process, it's it's actually very tiring for people to continue doing this. Uh, it's like swimming in gel. Um, you you want to observe those instances where waste manifests itself and get rid of it, and and work with them to identify those things and and figure out with them how how can we remove this from our environment to become more leaner, more faster. So it's just again, it makes resources tired having waste, and some people just stop doing things. And I've seen this in many companies. You know, when a, when a when a for example, a change management process is overly bureaucratic and has a lot of waste and a lot of steps, people will just ignore it and they'll just go ahead and do the change because I need to put this in production right away. So think about that. Okay, all right, got it. Um, let's move to the next one here. Uh, is, uh, we're considering acquiring um, ISO IEC 20,000 certifications. Um, how can DevOps and ITIL help here? Well, in one 
thing. Of course, ITIL is the basis of ISO 20K, and so you're pretty much covered there. Um, I, you know, these, uh, the requirements in ISO are can be traced all the way back to, I, to, to certain aspects of ITIL. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's just very basic set of requirements that must be met. Uh, they leave the, uh, the full document. It's, 20, it's 28 pages or 29 pages. So, but you need you need to do all of them. So, of course, ITIL will help you there. In terms of DevOps, and if you add a DevOps discipline coupled with a well-defined scope of services, very narrow, very lean, that will certainly make achieving the certification easier. Um, because you, as you transition faster and and better, and you learn because you're the the uh, DevOps feedback loop comes back to for, for you to learn what you did wrong or what you did well, and you improve that. Uh, all ISO 20000 has an, a big element in continual service improvement as, as well. So you're, you're basically using that to improve and, and do it better. You could probably achieve a certification in 18 months doing, you know, having pieces together. Lean IT helps here as well, you know, to identify waste and to get rid of waste and to make sure that you're putting there within the scope of the certification just the things you need to keep the certification. Okay. All right, and uh, this will actually be our last question today. Uh, we're sort of running out of time, but th it is, uh, we've been doing idle for years uh, with moderate success. Uh, what do we need to start doing to do DevOps? All right, so make sure that you understand your process and that they're executed consistently within your organization, and this is probably my biggest, my biggest piece of advice here. Once your people start executing processes consistently, then you can do fa go faster. Um, if your people are, if people across the organization are not doing this, you may not want to uh, to do DevOps just yet. Consider also checking for waste and removing that from any activity. Again, waste makes people tired, and DevOps is not for the tired. DevOps is always running, always running, always running. And, you know, of course, it's it's, fa it's faster, smarter, but you want to be good at it as well. Also. Uh, be willing to be transparent about the performance of the process and be willing to challenge and be challenged as it relates to improvement. Have an open mind as it relates to, to improving and going forth and communicating those improvements to the people involved. All right. Well, that's going to do it as far as time goes. I just want to point out some of the methods that we have to contact us. Um, our email address is info underscore North America at QuintGroup.com. Uh, please direct in, any inquiries there, and we'll definitely make sure that they're dealt with on a timely basis and sent to the correct party. Um, as well there, there's also our phone number to our headquarters and our website. And we are also active on just about every single social media channel, so please make sure to follow us there. Before we sign off, I just want to thank everyone again for making it today. We hope you found the session both educational and informative. Uh, to see the list of our upcoming webinars, they're on our website, www.quintgroup.com. is in the events section. That's where you can see the list of our upcoming webinars and other events as well. Uh, and in the Knowledge Center, that's where you can find our white papers and uh, articles and blog posts uh, from everything from DevOps to Lean IT, ITSM, the cloud sourcing, etc. And uh, if you have any additional inquiries, always, please feel free to reach out to us directly and even ask for Joel. That's his information right there. I know he'd be more than happy to talk um, idle DevOps, uh, ITSM, uh, Lean IT with you. Uh, feel free to ask if you ever want to have a conversation with him. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day.